Have you ever felt foolish for having bought gold, having bought silver, having invested your money into the precious metal mining stocks? Well, maybe, just maybe, should we take a look at what the fastest growing economies in the world, which also happen to have a majority of the world's population, maybe, should we look at what they're doing? Maybe would that give us a clue as to whether or not our decision to buy silver, buy gold, buy the precious metal mining stocks, whether that was a smart decision or a foolish decision. We're going to cover all that in this video. We're going to walk down that path. I'm going to hold your hand. Let's get started right now. <music> All right, give me your hand. I can't believe I said that, but since I did, give me your hand and let's head east. That's actually the direction that I'm pointing because east is where all of the precious metals are heading to right now. Silver, gold, platinum, palladium. They are leaving London. They are leaving New York City. And either by boat or aeroplane, they are all heading east. As a matter of fact, we've had almost 600 metric tons leave New York alone since April of this year. And where do you think it's all heading? Shanghai, Istanbul, New Delhi, the Middle East, everywhere in the east is gobbling up silver and gold. There's not enough to satisfy their insatiable appetite. I still got your hand. Let's look over there. You know what's over there? India. They are importing 10,000 metric tons of silver this year. That is 350 million ounces. That is a huge part of the 850 million ounces, which will be mined on a worldwide basis this year. If my math is correct, that means that for every 10 of the harder to get out of the ground ounces that the mining companies are pulling from the Earth's crust, out of every 10, four of them are heading to our good friends in India. We got a lot more to cover further down the path to walk. I'll keep holding your hands. Fascinating, interesting information. If you get any type of value from this video, and I hope you do, either education, entertainment, or some combination thereof, please, please consider subscribing to my channel. More important, turn the little bell wherever it is, ding-a-ling. That way you'll get notified every time I put out a new video, which is every single day, one day at a time. We can get through this, but you got a friend for life. You're always welcome in Ron's basement. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. You can be critical of me. Trust me, I know I'm not perfect and I'm often wrong, but we want to learn from you and we want to learn about you. Now let's get back to the path. Let's look over there with our flashlight. What do we see? The central banks in the eastern countries have been net buyers of gold for the last number of years. And our friends in India, they just never let us down. Their central bank has been buying gold for the last number of years. It now has almost 800 metric tons of gold. But wait until you hear this. Sit down. No more doing Zumba, whatever you're doing here while you're watching me. Sit down for this one. You may know this. I didn't know this. Indian households have 25,000 metric tons of gold. They love gold. We know they love silver, but they have 25,000 metric tons of gold. Do you know how much gold the entire United States government has? Fort Knox and all that. 8,000. Indian households alone have more than three times the amount of gold that the U.S. government has. And that's because in Asia, they look at gold differently. They look at it as a basic form of savings is what I'm told. I'm not there. I don't know. I've got a lot of Indian friends and Asian friends. I'll need to ask them how they feel about it. But if you're Indian or Asian or have firsthand knowledge, tell us in the comment section below. These people view gold and silver much, much differently than here in the West because 
we've basically been brainwashed against gold and silver. Our central bank, when it went off the gold standard, they don't want gold to do well. It makes the fiat, make-believe, fairy dart, fust, pust, fart, dust, whatever you want to say, make-believe, fiat currency like the dollar. If gold does well, that makes the dollar look bad. So they've had a concerted effort to have the American public not be interested in silver and gold, except for us, the one in 200, right? Right? We're like the, the smart guy. We're not like the herd. We like to dive a little deeper, which is what we're doing right now. And at some point, they're all going to want to join us. But you know what? There's not going to be any silver or gold left. I digress. Let's get back on the path. Give me your hand and look at the next subject. Now you hold on to my hand tight because we're going to go a long way down the path, all the way to London, England. Some of you don't have to go that far because we've got a lot of people that come to the basement that are from the UK. You're welcome from wherever you are in the world. But now that we've arrived in London, where I've never been coincidentally, we're going to go to the big LBMA, the London Bullion Market Association. They're one of the big central clearinghouses for precious metals. They had a conference. I was not invited. You probably weren't either. What the heck? Maybe next year we'll all meet up at the LBMA conference. I'm sure they're going to send us our invites. Nonetheless, fascinating comments came out of this conference. I have an article here from Kitco. You can read it yourself. Premiums for gold and silver bullion aren't dropping anytime soon, according to the LBMA. Let me just read a couple sentences out of this article. Unprecedented physical demand for gold and silver continued to dominate discussion at the LBMA's annual conference, which again, where we were not. Record flows from Western nations, like we've already covered, thank you very much, to Asia are impacting the global supply chain. Supply demand, right, when supply goes down and demand goes up, price is supposed to go up, it will happen. Furthermore, in regards to India and silver, Mark Woolley, senior vice president at Brinks Global Services. Now, Brinks, you know, they move the gold and silver and all that good uh, uh, platinum, palladium, move it all over the world. Here's a couple things he said. There's a new shift in the market with that metal now flowing back east. The panel noted that India particularly is seeing insatiable record appetite for silver. Quote, unquote, the flows, the flows from the U.S. have been unprecedented. Unprecedented, that means never happened before, I think. The majority of that metal is heading east. In regards to China and gold, after two years of market disruptions, China is once again asserting its dominance, dominance in the gold market with record imports in the last few months. Unprecedented. Record. These are the words we are reading. Wu Li said that shipments into China this year should exceed inflows seen in 2018. Let's see. Oh, I got more for it. In regards to the USA. Let's switch to the USA for a minute. <sighs> Looking at the U.S. market, Terry Hanlon, who's the president, not vice president, president, at Dillon Gage Metals, who I personally have never heard of, said that a massive supply and demand imbalance will continue to drive premiums for silver bullion higher. Yeah, have you tried to buy silver in the United States? The LCS's local coin shops don't have any in stock. Quote, unquote, the number of ounces we move in silver is, sit down, six times what we moved just three years ago in a normal week, normal month, or normal year. They're moving six times the amount of silver. The only thing that I can see that will happen is premiums will go up and up and up. Wow. Well, we traveled a long, long way down the path today, guys. You can let go of my hand now, but what did we learn? We learned that there are massive amounts of precious metals moving 
from the west to the east, right? There's huge demand over there. But also we learned that in the United States of America, there's big demand too. Now, take a step back. Think about China and India. Look at their population numbers. India is like 1.4 billion people alone, like four times the size of the United States. And they are gobbling, devouring all the silver and a lot of gold as well. China also huge population, gobbling up gold and silver. And don't forget those two countries, China and India, they are projected to be the dominant economies, economies in the world in the future. <sighs> things look bright for silver and gold. It may not feel that way right now, but if we take our flashlight out and look around like we did today, we can see a bright future. Thanks for joining me here in Ron's Basement. I hope you were entertained. I hope you learned something. Most importantly, I hope you come back. I'll see you next time.